we have a delegation here. Dr. Jeffrey Bernard, who is our chief medical examiner, I ask him to come forward. Ms. Lynn Pride Richardson, and, that, and whoever, whoever is a part of their delegation, along with Mr. Craig Walker and his delegation. Of the 
33 cases that have been exonerated. 16, almost 50% of those cases were done by the public defender's office. And so I don't want the public to be led astray as though we don't have quality litigants with regards to these offices, both interested in the ends of justice. And I, I think it just needs to be said. We, we glaze over it as though it has become common. These individuals were sentenced to 903 years and 14 life sentences, and they spent 501 years. Mr. Watkins. Good morning, Mr. Houston. Thank you for uh, the resolution conference. Um, you know, we really have an opportunity here in Dallas County uh, to really define what it means to be a prosecutor, to define the justice for this country. And um, a few years ago, we came and asked the commissioners uh, to approve our conviction integrity and fortune, but we were able to get approval not only from uh, Democrats, but Republicans. I wasn't here. Which allowed us to do this, which basically shined a light on an issue that uh, conventional wisdom would have said that this is really not an issue that we need to deal with. But obviously, uh, here in Dallas County, we have taken that mantle and basically called into question what we've been doing as it relates to justice in this country uh, over the last, well, since we've been in existence. Um, and so the fact that you all are recognizing us, the fact that we have fun, you all decided to fund this uh, program that we decided to do is telling as to the leadership that we have on this court. Uh, you all saw an opportunity make a difference, uh, to bring us into the 21st century, uh, to allow us to bring justice to, of all places, Dallas County, of all places, Texas. And so when other people look at this, they say, well, they're doing that in Texas. They're doing that in Dallas County, of all places. Why can't we do it? And what we have gained, and we hear this all the time, when we have jurors come down, uh, and they're going to being picked for jury duty, uh, they always say that we believe in our justice system now. We believe in the DA's office. They have credibility with us. Because we don't only expend our resources to individuals that are truly guilty, guilty. We expend our resources to make sure that we exonerate the innocent. And that is a role of the DA. We're not here to seek conviction. We're here to seek justice. One more thing. You know, and you said that the public defender's office is not getting uh, their credibility. Well, you know, I was a public defender. A lot of folks don't know that. In fact, Lynn Richardson, you probably don't remember this, but my first felony trial, she let me sit second chair with her. Um, so my training came from that office, uh, and I hope that uh, as we go forward that uh, they take uh, the public defender's office as serious as they do the DA's office there just as you, you testified in Congress not too long ago. What was the essence of that testimony with regards to? Well, you know, Congress, um, what they're doing uh, in Congress right now, they're um, trying to uh, keep the funding uh, for these programs because what we get, or we get funding basically uh, from the federal government that comes through COG um, and a lot of states get that funding. And so um, Senator Leahy wanted to keep that funding going, so he requested that we come down and testify uh, as it relates to the work that we've been doing here in Dallas County. And uh, let's not get lost on this issue. I think a lot of folks are concerned about the DA's office and the direction we're going. But in reality, the reality is, is that what we're doing is really the essence of what it means to be a DA, and I can't stress that more. Um, and what we see are the failings of the past. Because what we find is that when you get it wrong, we allow that individual who commits those crimes to continue to commit crimes. But when we get it right, we actually make the citizens of Dallas County safer. So the idea and the approach that we have is just to get it right. Uh, and we uh, restore credibility to our justice system. And 
you know, when we came, when, when, when we were running for office in 2006, we started talking about being smart on crime. Everybody laughed at that. But you see that the folks in Austin are talking about being smart on crime right now because it makes sense. Uh, from a budgetary standpoint, we all deal with that daily. Uh, but also from a standpoint of credibility and making sure the citizens believe in their government. Could you introduce the, uh, the delegation or cabinet? Oh, yes. All right. Now, this is Russell Wilson. Uh, uh, he is uh, chief of our conviction and character unit. Uh, he inherited the first assistant. And I'll let Russell come on and introduce everybody else, give him a moment to talk and tell him his background. He's from Oklahoma. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. We certainly appreciate the, uh, the proclamation, the recognition of our work. And you were right to invite a delegation uh, because in supervising the Conviction Integrity Unit, um, one of the things that I realized very quickly is that it takes a, a number of different moving pieces all working together to bring about uh, an exoneration uh, of a case. And I'll introduce the staff that works with, with, with my office. First is Cynthia Garza. She's uh, an attorney in our unit, and um, she does a lot of the groundwork that I ultimately get credit for, but uh, she does an outstanding job for us uh, on a daily basis. Uh, next is Sarah Miles. Sarah is our paralegal. Um, sometimes when a case comes in and people want to know where does it start out with, uh, we could get something as small as a note on a napkin saying that something was done wrong in the case, and we will at least do something to look into it. And Sarah's our, our what I would call our first line of a review. She looks out there and finds out what we have, where it's at, and starts out gathering our information. Um, Jim Hammond is our investigator back here. I'll tell you, I've done criminal defense in Dallas for 16 years. He's hands down the best investigator I've ever worked with. Very, very diligent. One of the most uh, admirable things that he's done recently was in a case that we just did, I believe, last week. Uh, made uh, you know, whatever the biggest word you want to put, magnanimous <laughs> efforts to find a witness uh, in a rural area in Canada um, to help us come back and prosecute um, people who had actually committed a crime when we were getting ready to exonerate the folks who had, who had not committed the crime. And it wouldn't be without that type of diligent work, uh, that type of commitment, you wouldn't have a person you, you wouldn't be able to bring about that result, which, which we, we thought was very correct for the victim in the case as well. And of course, Heath Harris, who's our first assistant district attorney, um, Heath and Mr. Watkins, in addition to running the district attorney's office, provide us valuable input on what we should do in our direction on all of our cases. So I'll, I'll, I'll let you leave Ms. Ben Richardson from the public defender's office to speak to her. Thank you so much, Commissioner Judge Jenkins. Uh, thank you so much for recognizing the office. And I just want to thank you because I think we have some of the hardest working employees here in Dallas County. And we always don't get the recognition that I think they deserve. I'm going to introduce some special guests in a moment um, and then turn it over to Julie Doucette, who is our DNA attorney. But actually, we started doing these cases. We got a position prior to 2007, as far back as 2003. And I have to thank Mr. Watkins because it wasn't until Mr. Watkins took office and came up with his unit that we were able to get the cooperation we needed. We live in America. We set the, the example for everybody else. It's just not acceptable to have innocent people locked away. It just isn't. There's no amount of money, no amount of money that can compensate these men for the years that they lost, the family members that passed away, uh, children that they didn't get a chance to um, watch grow up. We're better than that. We know where the flaws in the system is. I truly believe it is the best system, but there are flaws. We know unreliable eyewitness identification, suggestive identification procedures by law enforcement, prosecutorial misconduct, bad science, no science. We know where the problems lie. We've got to correct that. These men, I, I'm humbled to be in their presence because across the board, you will find that they are so forgiving and so kind when they get out. 
you know, I'm a woman of faith, but I have to be honest with you. If I were locked up for something that I was not guilty of, I'd be angry and bitter. So it's a testament to them and to God that they come out and they are so humble. I'm going to turn it over um, to Julie Doucette, but I do want to recognize Michelle Moore, who was our first DNA attorney and started this back in 2003 when we decided to create this position. She's now the public defender of Burnett County, but she was involved in all of these cases. I just have to say before I turn it over to you, you know, we've got to do it because it's the right thing to do. We've got to correct the wrong things and because it's fair. And I'm going to have Julie to introduce our special guests and some of our staff. And I have to say this, we really only have one dedicated person working on these cases, and that's Ms. Doucette. We have an investigator here, Kristen Smith, but she's one of five investigators that work for 89 lawyers. We have two secretaries for our criminal adult division of, of 76 lawyers. We have Matthew, um, who is here, Matthew Seymour, who is assigned to a felony court, but he works on these cases as well. Why? Because we're committed to doing the right thing. Judges, judge, commissioners, thank you for this acknowledgement. Those of us here today are extremely fortunate to be able to work <coughs> we're so very passionate about. The opportunity to have an impact on the lives of people like James Williams and Raymond Jackson is, in a word, humbling. But the exonerations to date are only the tip of the iceberg. There are vast numbers of individuals whose cases are currently under review in our office. Every John Doe on this screen represents a living, breathing individual who is asserting his innocence, most of them from behind bars. Court appointments and requests from inmates come into your public defender's office on an almost daily basis. The number continues to grow. We owe it to them and to ourselves to fully investigate and litigate when necessary their claims so that they can join these guys. And as you see, that's Mr. Williams there. Oh, well, he's gone already. <laughs> sorry, sorry, James. However, these claims are difficult and time consuming. When you see the related news clips, it seems so neat and tidy. But it all starts with that last picture, which is the ever-growing pile of paperwork in my office. With your continued support, both today and in the future, the Public Defender's Office of Dallas County can continue to produce these life-altering results. And I would like to take a moment to introduce you to Mr. Williams, James Williams, and Brandon Jackson. There are two most recent exonerates in Dallas County. They served between the two of them, well, each of them served 28 years um, before being released by the talk last week. Dallas County Commissioners. Thank you, sir. It's an honor to be here today and to be a part of something as great as this. And I thank you all, and I thank God for the science that <clears throat> of forensic science to help people like us and people like you all. And I'm very grateful to you all. You are like angels that are still here on earth that was never taken. Those who support and help for justice like this. And I'm grateful for a country like this, even though we have these terrible things that happen like this sometimes for due process. And I'm grateful that the DNA testing and everything was still preserved for so long. And I thank the, Mr. Craig Watkins, and I thank Ms. Julie Doucette and those that work with these people. And I thank you people for your kindness. Let me just say before you move on, that my, you all love saying things. We owe you an apology. And uh, James said most of everything, but I, you know, I feel feel that like, uh, we do appreciate what y'all have done for us. They don't need for the science and the DNA to do the billion to Now I lost uh, most of my family since I've been there. But I hope we don't do that since anymore. I just want to just live the rest of my life in peace. You know? And uh, I feel
appreciate Mr. Julie very much and Ms. Machia. They've done the best in this thing that I could ever think of. Uh, you know, and uh, the old few of other doctors. And you may know, say we don't owe you anything, but if we don't be for that, our life would have been over. And I really appreciate it. Thank you, John. Thank you. I'd also, if you wouldn't mind, like to introduce yeah, please. Um, Christian Smith, the investigator extraordinaire who worked on these cases as well as many others. Matthew um, Seymour, who recently has started working on some of the cases in our office. He's also assigned to a court full time, so he does this in his spare time just because he's a black professional. Um, Jennifer Zarati who wades through the pile and the stacks of trial transcripts and letters and court orders that come in to our office on a day day basis. Um, she, we have, I have her for exactly one half of one day per week. And in that one half of one day per week, she manages to keep me organized, and I'm eternally grateful for that. Um, Theo Pugh, who is one of the fellow supervisors in our office, and as well as Priscilla Latham, who is the technologically gifted because I am not. <laughs> um, and Paul Walker, the first assistant public defender who supports Lynn and, and um, helps with all the day-to-day -day running of our office and certainly supports this endeavor. We hope that you remember um, the impact that we've been able to have on James and Ray's life as well as everyone that you know, that has, has appeared before you and remember it only now but if I do time. Resolution. Uh, 
again. I, uh, I just appreciate you guys as a, as a team. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, I know we like to say it's the end of the <coughs> it's, it's interesting the profile of these individuals. There's a new book called uh, Picking Cop. It's, it's not that new. And it was where some more case these gentlemen just went through, that uh, the victim chose a man named Cop out of a line as being the assailant. Subsequently, she has co-authored a book with him to say how she was led down that path. He was exonerated as well. Uh, I just appreciate you. I appreciate you. I uh, want you to know that this county appreciates you. The citizens and especially these exonerates appreciate you. And uh, thank you for your work, Bob. And maybe be what you were designed to do. The district attorney's office was designed to be meet the ends of justice, too. This doesn't happen just because that was the design. It takes people in those positions. If I may say, uh, I'm really glad for the foresight that you had to say that evidence because we're lucky we're at a point now that we can make determinations from evidence that we could not have made determinations from 10 years ago. And at the time that we had the vote, uh, Craig was a new DA, and this was a a little bit controversial, and in retrospect, it's a no-brainer because, uh, and I, I'm really glad I voted for it. I was a swing vote uh, that that enabled this project to get off the ground. And it, you know, when I when I see these two gentlemen that aren't in in prison because of the, this evidence that have been saved and the new methods that can be applied to this old evidence. I'm just uh, so proud that we have saved it. I, I feel very concerned about those counties and states that perhaps don't save that evidence. Is there quite a bit of evidence that isn't saved in other places? Well, Mary Sheck apparently made a comment that said that if the evidence had been saved in New York, as it was saved in Dallas County, that there'd be a whole lot more people exonerated in New York. So. I don't know whether that was true or not, but I would suspect that there's a, a lot of areas where it wasn't safe. Well, I don't think anybody wants anyone to be in prison that shouldn't be there. And I'm just proud that Dallas County took this step. Very thank you. Well, I've well, been saving evidence forever, but it took courage. And I want to say that to Mr. Watkins. It took courage. He's the one that proposed the, the public uh, conviction unit. We've been had the evidence. We did general locked up for 28 years. We've been had the evidence. The evidence has been there. And so, if you, you know, the evidence has nothing to do with that if you don't have the courage to move on. And I, I thank all of you for having the courage to move on. If anybody has any more comments, I would like to say something to the two exonerees. <coughs> yeah, gentlemen. I think it speaks for itself that this county is in the low 20% African American, and that every face on that board of its operators um, is, is, is black. Um, you're an inspiration to me. Um, you're a witness to me when I, when I feel uh, slighted or angry with someone. The fact that you have no bitterness with what you've been through is, is just a profound inspiration. I want to join those voices of people who have apologized to you on behalf of Dallas County, as the county judge of Dallas County. Uh, personally, to each of you, I, I apologize uh, for what this county um, did in wrongfully convicting you. Uh, and I, I appreciate all that you're doing now uh, to help other people in, in your past situation. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you.
pitching, just a pitching dog. Well, I, I wanted to say something. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to thank Commissioner Conrad for this before bringing this resolution because it was a lot of time. And we all talk about justice, we all talk about how the job is to be sure that that was found in the process and we that. It's really about leadership, it's really about vision, it's really about hard work. And uh, the words really, really mean a lot to us. Because we need to remember that every single time that we see departments like the district attorney's office, like the uh, public defender, and of course, you know, the, the examiner, we see now, and I hope we remember this, what achievement is. We talk about um, budgeting for outcomes, about performance base, and this is a sudden a performance base and budgeting for outcomes. <coughs> In my mind, you know, when you fight for money, when you fight for justice, it's all about teamwork, and you all exemplify that. And I will remember. Thank you, Mr. Watkins, for your leadership, for the vision, and for continuing to fight for justice. Because at the end of the day, that's what makes me sleep better. Thank you all for your kindness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Scores mean nothing if we are not giving the best programs and the best services to our kids. I would take a zero if we were doing great by kids in Dallas County. Um, fortunately, we don't have that issue. We have people who do an outstanding job of ensuring that our I's are crossed, our T's are, our I's are dotted, our T's are crossed, and we provide exceptional service to kids. Um, what that score doesn't tell you is when auditors talk to our kids and know what's going on in the state school with Giddings and Urbans and some of the other counties about kids who are abused and, and destroyed once they go to a state facility, they said we were exceptional in terms of when they talk to our kids. You know, they felt safe that, that they're learning our recidivism rates are low for some of our populations that have programs in place. It, it, as a department head, yes, we do get a lot of credit, but the credit, in fact, goes to the people who are standing behind me because they are in the trenches every single day. They don't give up, um, and they work extensively with our kids. So um, Mr. Heath and I are very, very fortunate to have such wonderful, wonderful staff, and I'll let Mr. Heath introduce Ms. Boss. Thank you, Dr. Smith, and thank you, uh, commissioners, uh, again. Dr. Smith is uh, very humble and she always deflects, uh, but if I could take a moment of personal privilege and she may fire me later, so I may need your help. Uh, but the commitment that she has to young people, youth first is not simply a mantra, it is in a sense a cultural lifestyle that we're engaged in uh, allowing to permeate our department. Uh, the other day we had some issue uh, with uh, some young people in one of our facilities, uh, the contracted facilities. Dr. Smith left her office to go to that facility in Houston. I need you to really get that to sink in. There is no other chief probation officer that's going to leave their desk uh, to go see about these kids the way that she does. And I'm sure that uh, uh, executive director was quite taken aback to see her that quickly since she had talked to her that morning. But again, that's the kind of commitment and then this wonderful staff that we are blessed uh, to work with have embraced that. And so with that, uh, certainly Ms. Boss is one of our shining stars. And so I introduce Ms. Marilyn Boss. Good morning. It is certainly an honor to be acknowledged here this morning. We certainly don't do it for the acknowledgments. We do it for what is in the best interest of the youth that we serve. And they have given us lots of accolades before. We never could have done this without the administrative support. And certainly, I could never do this without a team. It takes a team effort every day, uh, commitment, dedication, above and beyond service to do what we do for these children in Dallas County. And we will continue to be committed to excellence, committed to doing better every day as we continue to put you first. And my team is behind me. Ms. Garrett, who is the Administrative Assistant. Ms. Bowser, who is the Business Manager. Ms. Nickelberry, who is the Case Manager. Ms. Nixon, is the Secretary. Ms. Johnson, is one of the Probation Officers. Ms. Miranda, is our Detention Manager. Mr. Walker, is the Assistant Superintendent, Program Manager. Ms. Haynes, and Ms. Probst, our Quality Assurance Administrators. And we do have others who could not be here because they are at the facility working with the team. So thank you, thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Boss and uh, Dr. Smith and Mr. E, <clears throat> this is uh, one of the facilities we've uh, been kind of struggling with for a few years. Uh, she talks about the secretary of the when you show up like that. The secretary had just signed in, but she couldn't have just signed in at 10 o'clock at night. Um, and so they, uh, some of us have known them showing up at 10 o'clock at night, correct? Here's the The whole, except that I've gone home and gone to sleep and then pop up out there. Um, 5 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock, they, they know. But that, that's because, you know, they understand and they've gone through a lot. Keep in mind, this was a facility that we had outsourced. We outsourced this facility, and then we bought it back in house. And uh, as such, uh, we we we've gotten great results. And so, I appreciate the team, uh, the energy, uh, what we've gone through to 
around and uh, kind of go through a few people, right? But we, we, we made it, we, 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 we come full circle. So I, I just wanted to commend you on behalf of Dr. John and the members of the Juvenile Board representing the court, but on behalf of the, uh, the board. Uh, it, it does make us proud. And Dallas County does set, set up a high mark. Both um, in the juvenile system and in the county committee. But I, I, I agree with Mr. Heath, uh, Dr. Smith. Um, you know about the case down there. And the fact that you are hands on makes all the difference in the world in terms of how Dallas County is viewed with our contract placement. And they understand that not just we will send a contract compliant officer, but that the director show up and see what's going on. And so I appreciate that. By the way, we got the 2 o'clock in the morning uh, email in regards to that case. Uh, we just had a lot of high profile cases today. Uh, but one of the things I appreciate about she goes and she's hands on and so is the rest of the staff. So again, on behalf of this court and this county, thank you. Thank you very much for all of you.
for um, taking care of some of the complaints that constantly come in election time in person. So, uh, just wanted to make those comments because I'm I'm really happy the way the elections department is going. Well, not the way. It's not stressful holding this whole election. Oh, no. I turn around and have the whole state election on my back.
back to the script of Douglas Manning. I did three operations in engineering project management, recommended approval of the public lease agreement with the new single wireless for five square feet of space in the Frank Crowley parking garage. I did four tax assessment collector, recommended approval of the contract with Park Place Limited and associated businesses for remote sticker printing systems for motor vehicle registration. I did five human resource civil services request authority to expand and reestablish the Special Civil Service Commission and the Dallas County Civil Service Commission with the effective dates outlined in the agreement to hearings on pending grievances. I did five B recommend approval of policy revisions to Chapter 86 performance appraisals and merit award policy and distribute the county departments for 30 day review and comments. Item 6 IT, 6A recommends approval of the Cycle Special Services Contract support of the need compliant standard vendor interface for law enforcement information sharing. Item 6B, recommend approval of level 3 internet access for two sheriff department officers. Item C, that photo was on your formal agenda. Item 7, public works. Recommend approval to revise Division 4, Section 62-121 through 6216 of the South County Code of Tax Closure Resale Policy and resale to third party purchases. Yes. And this is a uh uh, we are just uh, the revised part where we incorporate the legislature changes, right? Yes, and it's also our initiative to try to uh, bring in more foreclosure properties and also okay. increase the amount of separate uh, for each one of the properties. And this is, you know, I, I know the city, the different municipalities are having different initiatives also to accelerate this. So we're working in conjunction with them. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, and I think this is something that will help us all as a county and you know, as well as our community and your staff because hopefully a lot of the properties that have the problems of landing that take forever to be able to bring them to this process and hopefully this will make it expedited because some of the flight. Yeah, and we're working also with uh, John Ames and the other departments as well on this initiative. So let's start push to get this one. Thank you for reminding me about this great stuff that I have to get. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have made budget 8A the common travel training request. The higher fees exception for tax assessment collector, district attorney, health and human service, and has exactly like extension. I have one travel bring up for Mr. Thompson to travel to Arlington, Texas on May 9th for a low income advisory committee meeting with TXU. I <coughs> judge that the future reading agenda you have one speaker listed. All commission and court attendees are hereby advised that this meeting is conducted in accordance with the provisions of the Dallas County Code, Section 74 71. Visitors and registered speakers have to preserve order and decorum at all times. Personal, profane, and slanderous remarks are not appropriate and will not be allowed at any time during this public meeting. Any and all applause is to be kept brief in observance to time constraints. Disruptive visitors and or registered speakers may be removed and are subject to the penalties provided in the state of Texas Penal Code sections 38.13, 42.01, 22.05. Registered individual speakers are limited to a maximum of three minutes. And the maximum discussion on any one topic is limited to 30 minutes. And the only registered speaker today is Mr. Charles Lingerfeld. Good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Charles Lingerfeld, 1608 Bell Meadow Lane, Dallas, Texas, 75253. One of the most important lessons I've learned in my lifetime was from my students and the Mullahs in northern Iraq and western Iran in 2007. They told me the legendary and historical story of a blacksmith named Kawa who decided to challenge the tyrant who had ruled his day through massive murder, killings, and intimidation. He challenged the tyrant to the mountaintop and he told the tribal uh, villagers and all the people below that should I win the battle on the top of the mountain, I will create a fire so that you will see in the valley below the light and the fire from a mountain. And that will be an indication to you 
that we have brought freedom and liberty to uh, our villagers and our people. I sat in their homes and ate lunch with them and dinner with them. I listened because my mother told me that God has given me two ears and one mouth and I should listen more than I speak. Sometimes I wonder about that, but anyway, I listened and I learned. Today we are faced with many challenges of, the, of life. There are cultural battles and wars going on all throughout America and it seems that our freedom and our liberty is at stake in many areas. I wonder about that here in Dallas County sometimes. I'm speaking to you today about integrity because integrity matters not only in my life but in your life. It, matter, it matters to all of us. As we've seen this morning by those who've experienced new freedom and liberty, I declare to you that injustice to anyone is injustice to everyone. I tell my students in northern Iraq and to my students in western Iran that freedom is a beautiful thing. I said that to two of the gentlemen who walked out here this morning and they agreed with me that freedom is indeed a beautiful thing. Kawa faced his bully and he defeated him and he lit the fire and today every March of every year the Kurds celebrate throughout the Middle East and around the world by lighting the fires of freedom so that all may see that we are free. I light a fire within my spirit. I light a fire we're here this morning to remind you that we must not allow a culture of trickery or deceit to prevail in our midst anywhere whatsoever. I might not always remember what you say, but I will remember what you do. So I call upon you this morning, every one of you, to do the right thing. Allow people to constructively criticize once in a while so that we all can better ourselves. Thank you. Uh, the court is now reconvened in public session and recessed for a closed session of law authorized by Chapter 551 of the Mexican government. Someone's shaking their head. Shaking your head, name. Uh, and, and any action as a result of the closed session will take place in a subsequent open session.